Warning. Any non-authorized personnel accessing this file will be immediately terminated through memetic kill agent. Scrolling down without proper memetic inoculation will result in immediate cardiac arrest followed by death. You have been warned. Memetic kill agent activated. Continued life signs confirmed. Removing safety interlocks. Item number, SCP-1782. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. The entrance and a perimeter of SCP-1782 are to be monitored at all times. Although SCP-1782 has not yet proven itself to be outwardly hostile, the door to the room should be guarded by at least two armed personnel at all times. The area is only to be explored by unmanned drones, which have been requisitioned since the events of the 9th of April. Description, SCP-1782 is a room measuring 42 or 45 square meters, in an abandoned apartment complex located in Kiev, Ukraine. Imprints over the archway entering the room read Jedna Devatos MD, 198D. SCP-1782's interior changes in appearance every three days at 3.12 am. The change is instantaneous. SCP-1782 is usually furnished with typical household objects, although SCP-1782, and the objects themselves, when present, are aged significantly with signs of heavy use. The floor plan of the room varies, certain instances having a kitchen, bedroom, and living room, or simply being a large, empty space. SCP-1782 occasionally manifests what appear to be sapient entities and fauna. Objects appearing before the change vanish regardless of their proximity to SCP-1782 at exactly 3.12 am. Further examples can be found in the area records for this object. SCP-1782 does not appear to have a detrimental effect on subject centering. Testing subjects in all cases return from the interior of the room with a fear of holes. Exact reasons for this are unknown. Area Record 1782. Date, the 23rd of August. Event, room materializes empty. The sound of metal scraping against metal can be heard. A disembodied female voice can be heard repeating the phrase shakes me, makes me lighter until 3.12 am. Area record 1782. Date, the 26th of August. Event, room materializes empty. Sound does not travel through the interior, although upon further inspection a small area on the left wall of the floor plan emits a faint metallic grating noise. Area record 1782. Date, the 29th of August. Event, an elderly human feeding itself to a group of cat carpos. Did not express pain, appeared ambivalent. Excerpt from interview 1782-831. SCP-1782-1, and then I'll be eaten. There's a hole in the wall in the bottom of the floor. SCP-1782-1, but I don't see how that makes any difference. What could have been? Dr. Sanders, can you tell us what you're doing? What is your name? SCP-1782-1, it is a meat offering. Thou shalt put oil upon it, and lay incense thereon. Dr. Sanders approaches the entity and the group of birds. They are non-hostile. SCP-1782-1, pour all the rest of the blood thereof at the foot of the altar, chickadees. In the hole in the floor. Dr. Sanders motions for a guard and instructs him to pick up one of the birds. The bird is examined and appears mundane. A skin sample is taken from the entity at this time, the results are later found to be normal. The bird is placed on the floor and it continues feeding on the entity. Dr. Sanders, tell me what you're thinking. SCP-1782-1 behavior becomes abnormal. 
The subject intermittently pinches different parts of its exposed flesh and can be seen trying to make suggestive eye contact with Dr. Sanders during this portion of the interview. SCP-1782-1, nothing out of the ordinary. The birds are hungry though. Dr. Sanders, do I look hungry to you? SCP-1782-1, now what kind of question is that? You some kind of loony? Dr. Sanders, is there something wrong? SCP-1782-1, no. I am feeling a bit bloated though. Must have been all of that sugar and brandy I drank before she brought me in here. SCP-1782-1, there's an abortion under the floorboards, one in the sink, two. Interview concluded. Area record 1782. Date, the 9th of April. Event, room appears with two partitions, including a bathroom housing only a toilet, and a small rectangular entrance accessible through a small hole in the wall. The room is tinted a dull green, with what appears to be caked blood and feces on certain sections of the walls. A man in an orange jumpsuit materializes instantly outside of the door to SCP-1782 with a television camera on his shoulder. Attempts to communicate with the entity are successful, although unorthodox. The entity asked that Dr. Sanders produce a small television set and stay outside of the cell, so that he could record the girl in the wall in the bottom of the floor. Those in charge of testing obliged. The following is a transcript of the recording. Transcript 1782-904, 1630 and 4 seconds to 1630 and 15 seconds, entity enters the room. A faint noise similar to metal scraping against metal can be heard throughout the video. A decidedly upbeat pop-punk song begins playing, the singer repeating the lyrics There's a hole in the wall in the bottom of the floor. There's a girl in the wall in the bottom of the floor. Music continues until Avenue feed ends. 16.30 and 15 seconds to 16.33 and 18 seconds, Entity takes a right towards a small, cubicle-like partition containing only a toilet. The camera is positioned over the toilet to reveal what appears to be a mutilated fetus in the basin. Video begins to distort, seemingly for some sort of artistic effect. This continues until 16.33 and 18 seconds, when the entity exits the bathroom. 16.33 and 18 seconds to 16.40 and 59 seconds, camera pans in circles around room, temporarily reaching impossible speeds before again slowing down. The object in the toilet seen previously is cut into view of the footage intermittently. Metallic grating grows louder. 16.40 and 59 seconds to 16.54, camera fixes on a small hole in the wall on the left side of the room. The entity places the camera on the floor and can be seen adjusting his suit before again picking up the camera. Entity heads towards the hole in the wall, entering a prone position and somehow crawling into the hole. Video goes black for 5 minutes, music continues to play, and heavy breathing can be heard from two separate sources. 1654 to 1655 and 6 seconds light returns, revealing a damp, muddy area that the camera could not possibly fit in. View is centered toward the ground, gradually scrolling upwards across what initially appears to be a miniature, uncased septic tank with small, skeletal legs similar to a human's. As the view continues to scroll, a clear fluid can be seen spraying in a small funnel upwards into what is later revealed to be a human skull lacking a lower jaw or nasal cavity, with exaggerated eye sockets. Faint crying is audible as the septic tank object's head moves slightly to the right with the aid of small, skeletal hands from opposing sides of the camera's view. Brown liquid sprays onto the object's face before video feed ends. Entity does not return from the hole. An RC car with some obstacle clearing capability was requisitioned and mounted with a GPS and video camera to inspect the whole of the 0904 SCP-1782. The device successfully entered the hole and a live feed confirmed the object recorded by the previous entity. 
video feed of the object reveals limbs and head of the object moving slowly up and down. Footage went on steadily past 3.12 am, revealing that the object does not disappear during SCP-1782 cycles, although the entrance to its location is no longer present. GPS positioning reveals the location of the entity to be in the same location as Dr. Sanders, although testing reveals this to be false. Later GPS readings suggest that the device is located at any mature female within 5 meters of SCP-1782 on any given day. The entity located outside of the door prior to exploration could not be located. The area was deemed safe and researcher Breen and Ortega were dispatched one hour before SCP-1782's reset time of 3.12 am to receive a DNA sample from the object in the toilet. Excerpt from DNA Recovery 1782-942 Researcher Breen, all right hand me the scalpel now. Breen leans over the toilet and, appearing startled, falls backwards. Researcher Ortega, what the hell's wrong? Researcher Breen, thought I saw the damn thing move. Breen writes himself and leans back over the bowl to receive the sample. Breen immediately stands straight up, closes his eyes, and faces Ortega for five seconds. Researcher Breen, yeah. It's moving. Right. Yeah. Okay. Researcher Ortega, I'll do it. Researcher Ortega asks Breen to leave the bathroom and leans over the toilet to retrieve the sample. Researcher Ortega exits the bathroom at a brisk pace without the sample. Researcher Ortega, it looked at me. Researcher Breen, all right. Let's just put the whole thing in the bag real quick. Researchers enter the bathroom again. Breen holding the sample bag and Ortega using tongs to place the object inside. Researcher Ortega disappears. The sound of water splashing is heard in the toilet. Breen sprints toward the door to SCP-1782 and exits the room.